or almost like like diving, like what we were just talking about, right? Okay, so uh, let's talk about the Kamikaze then. So this is a tier five Japanese destroyer, um, banned from sale because of how great she was. So uh, I like to give history lessons for old ships like this. So quick little history lesson for all of you guys. Originally, she's a clone of the Tech Tree Minikaze, who was tier five when, she, when it started up. Minikaze had two torpedo options available. 10 kilometer torpedoes and 7 kilometer torpedoes. Wargaming uh, decided at a certain point to get rid of the 10 kilometer torpedoes, mostly because people didn't understand 10 kilometer torpedoes. I see a destroyer. If I'm within 10 kilometers of that destroyer, I could be torpedoed, and therefore I should probably change my course or something, right? So Wargaming said, all right, we're going to nerf the Kamikaze, or sorry, the Minikaze, by dropping the 10 kilometer torpedo. Out of it and then they had a great idea of let's take the minikaze as she is let's copy paste it and let's put the seven kilometers on it like the, the standard and we're going to sell it because it's a popular ship at tier five so they made it's... the kamikaze they made the fujin they made the kamikaze r okay they made those three those are the three triplets and then by that point players learned how to properly assassinate things with the Minakaze. The seven kilometer torpedoes, though seeming to be a nerf at the start, actually ended up being a great buff because players learned how to assassinate and, and get really close to concealment and made the ship even deadlier. So what did Wargaming do? Hold the ships from, from sale. Grunty, were you trying to say something? She, she's not a hundred percent clone of the Minikaze. There were minor differences in the rudder yeah. shift, in the speed, and in the layout where the turrets are placed and where the torps are placed. That's true. But like essentially, she played the same. Yes. Like, it, it was really, really minor difference in how you could fire the gun firing angles, and I think like a kilometer, a knot difference in speed or something like this. Like, it was a very, yeah. Main point, back in time, the ship wasn't OP. It was just a slightly different variant of the existing tech tree. Mm -hmm. And again, as Chad is, is saying, yes, the Torps are very fast for the tier. Those were the seven. The idea was the shorter range was faster, and that was the trade-off. You picked the longer range, slower Torps. But then, like I said, Wargaming thought, okay, well, we're going to get rid of this and therefore nerf that particular ship. And then they buffed it. So, eventually Minikaze was nerfed when they did the line shift, and then they changed the characteristics of Minikaze. It stems from a time where IGN torpedoes were still good, and and then Wargaming nerfed them all by reducing their detection. All the hatred that you, right now, that players put towards subs and shotgunning, that went on to Japanese destroyers originally, because... They did the same kind of deal, although you know, not not the run up and shotgun as much, right? You can you can absolutely trap people and surprise them around corners, but this is the original ship where you see torpedoes, but you can't be you can't fight back, which is why hydro was introduced, which is why radar was introduced. All now, ways. Radar was introduced for the smoke shooting. Well, yes, but to a certain extent also to spot ships that are playing very close to enemy ships within their torpedo range and, and feathering their concealment, right? Anyway, Maybe. Let, <laughs> let's go ahead and take a look at the um, at the ship build. Oops, wrong button. Build viewer. So here's our kamikaze. Um, so we've got um, on this build... Huh? I'm surprised. <laughs> Why? Didn't expect aiming systems. Okay. So main armaments, uh, damage control, and then aiming systems. Aiming systems you don't expect because this is pre predominantly a torpedo-based ship. So you would expect down here, Torpedo Tubes Modification 1. Keep your torpedo tubes alive, make your torps even faster, right? and then help them turn a little bit quicker. <sighs> yes, electric, exactly, a tier 10, Chimikaze at tier eight, with, or, or with eight kilometer torques, right, the F3s. Um, now, this is useful if you plan on shooting your guns, but Minikaze, Kamikaze, all of them, the, 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 the guns are 
The guns are only there to finish something off, or if you've got nothing else to do with your life, you're about to die. There's really no in-between. You're not going to gun down an enemy uh, destroyer with the guns. Unless they're really low The reload low is health. just too bad. Like, it's good yeah. alpha damage still, but the reload... And the church verse. Like, look, at the, look at the build. Like... <laughs> you always like to look ahead, Grunty. Let's move down to the captain build. Now, I don't know if this is a standard captain or not. Um, this is something else to keep in mind. That, that Thud Twit is a co-op player. This is one of his few random battles that he's played, and he wanted to get some feedback on it, so... Keep that in mind. Um, he probably... I know he doesn't have Yamamoto. and I'm, I believe he doesn't because we helped him get it recently on the campaign. So actually, this might be Yamamoto. Um, doesn't Suzuki, really make a difference. No, Suzuki would be a good choice. Right, Suzuki would be a good choice as well. Yamamoto would actually help with preventative maintenance, by the way. Um, now, your captain build here. I had just mentioned how this is all about torpedoes. You have to build for the torpedoes. So, exactly, Diz. Exactly. It's very much appreciated. We got somebody who's willing to, to toss in a replay and, and really sit down and say, okay, well, what can I do? So, we're trying to help. So, um, preventive maintenance is fine to start. Last end is fine to start. I always oh, like my God. core build. Um, don't, don't guns. No, don't do guns. My core build and I mean, a destroyer. Like, let's be honest. Like, if if he is a co-op player, I could yes. see a build like this for ten points for co-op. Hmm? Because like it doesn't really matter in co-op, and getting your guns to shoot a bit more in co-op is mm -hmm. probably better than having the concealment and the survivability expert. Hundred percent, because you're gonna you smoke take yourself. Out in randoms, it gets very dicey. Mm -hmm. But see, this is where I would say, even if you are a co-op main mm -hmm. and you dabble in randoms, it's better to build for randoms. Always. Because the builds are going to be, you know, so much more different. But if it works in randoms, it's going to work in co-op, guys. And I think part of the problem with building co-op specific is you learn the bad habits that come from co-op. And then that translates very poorly to random. That's why a lot of players who are co-op mains never really, you know, they dabble in randoms a couple of times and then they just get completely destroyed. Because the habits that they've learned are, are not good at all for randoms. So this is what I always suggest is the core build for just about every destroyer out there. There's always exceptions. But you start with preventative maintenance, last stand, survivability expert, and concealment expert, right? Um, keep it so your stuff doesn't break as much. Keep it so that you can keep moving if they do break. Allow yourself to take more damage before you die. And don't get spotted as often so you don't get shot at and take as much damage. Okay? That's your standard core build. I've got a great YouTube video of Zach Chat about core builds if you want to learn more about that kind of stuff. Especially for the Kamikaze, like, it's the Stelsius Destroyer and... You're giving this up. Back in stealthiest. You go, uh, Anyway. No. The tier two. Five oh. two yeah, said at its matchmaking range. Well, you kind of went dark for a little bit there as you were talking, but we got uh, the gist of oh, it. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, anyways, this is this is where you start with your first ten points, and then from there, you've got some choices. Like I said, this is a torpedo focused ship so there's nothing wrong with fill the tubes for example why wouldn't you want your torpedoes to reload 10 percent sooner there's nothing wrong with swift fish because why wouldn't you want your torpedoes to be faster even especially including this change to torpedo tubes right liquidator you can get away with taking or not it just depends on how many points you've got i'm trying to focus on the, the specific like where you want to focus on um adrenaline rush if you do take some damage, it is very useful. However, it does lock you out from taking any further four-point skills. So you may wish to consider taking radio location. This gives you an idea of who's closest to you. 
Your torpedo tubes are important, but your guns, if you think about it, are very slow to turn. And sometimes it comes in handy to know where your guns uh, need to be pointed so that in that initial engagement, you can fire your guns right away. That's how I like to use radio location. Caveat, the person that you are looking at that's radio located for you gets a little warning that they are located by somebody. If that's a battleship that you want to hunt, that battleship may panic and turn and run away. Keep that in mind, there's positives and negatives to radio location. So that's up to you to decide. But by the time you get to there, you should be able to have enough games in your belt to decide which of these two skills is more important to you. If you take Adrenaline Rush, I would recommend your last choice would be Superintendent. Why wouldn't you want an extra smoke and an extra engine boost? To me, that just makes a lot of sense. If you don't want uh, that and instead you want the utility from radio location, you might even drop fill the tubes, although frankly, I would keep fill the tubes from the Kamikaze. And then you're left with a couple of other choices up here at one pointers. Consumable specialist is very handy to get your smoke up sooner and get your engine boost available sooner. I might consider running consumables uh, specialist or consumables enhancements so that their duration is improved. Okay, you'll note that you only have two points left. So this is a good choice or this plus another tier one. That's where you would pick your liquidator up. So you've got a few options there and no worries, Grunty. Sorry to hear about that and German internet. Putting him by missed anything. No, I'm just a slave to RPF. Like even for the Minikaze. Yeah. A seal clubbing Minikaze or Kamikaze is gonna have radio location. Yeah, I, and that's exactly why I'm playing it. Mm -hmm. That's why you're playing it. That's why right. I'm I playing will, it. I will also take uh, the turret traverse uh, for my guns because I'm not okay. afraid to use them. That's a good point to grease the gears. We come in very handy as a final one point skill. Um, in this case, I would probably go consumable specialist and and uh, grease the gears and finish off the build that way. Mm -hmm. Point is, you've got a lot of options. Take your time. You'll get to a 21 point captain at some point. Now, if you've got Yamamoto on here, I want to point out you get buffed grease the gears and you get buffed preventative maintenance. Both things are really nice. So keep that in mind. Suzuki's are also good choices because of the buffed survivability expert. So that's fine too. But this ship does absolutely fine with a standard captain. Flags, anti-debt, uh, anti-burn, flood chance, fire and flood chance, smoke. Okay. Personally, I wouldn't run the smoke. It's an expensive uh, signal. Best to keep those for higher tier stuff. Doesn't do much either. Like, mm -hmm. get like, what, like three seconds, two seconds longer smoke? Right. Well, right. The other thing, basically, anybody who may have just picked the ship up due to Santa crates, whatever your shimmy captain is, that's who you just slap into this thing because it's the build that you're going to be running. Yeah. Uh, yes and no. If you want the swift fish, you probably can't slap on the shimmer captain. And I really like the swift fish on the kamikaze for the seal clubbing, especially if you have to go after ships that try to run away because your seven kilometer distance mm -hmm. is rather limited. And if the torps mm -hmm. are faster, you have a better chance to have these torpedoes reach. Right, but why are you not running swift fish on a shimikaze? Why are we not building shimmy to be a torpedo because boat? Because there's only one point left, and if you want to take Adrenaline Rush and fill the tubes and raid location and survivability expert, you can't take Swift Fish. Right, don't take Adrenaline Rush. I'm sorry, it's it's a waste. You get that low to where it's that effective? You're dead anyways. AR is better than Swift Fish on a Shimmer. Nah. Again, one of the nice things is, you can hear a lot of back and forth about it. Grunty does have a lot of experience in Shimakaze, so I will defer to him in this particular discussion about a Shimakaze build. But let's go ahead, and that's beyond the scope of this replay, so let's get into uh, the battle that uh, we have queued up here, okay? We're going to drop the build viewer, and let's go. 
Oops. Our setup is tier five and tier four and no carriers at all. Who did you pay for this brilliant matchmaking? Wow. Seems like no bots either, right? Oh, there's bots. Oh, One, no, there's two, bots. three, four, five <laughs> on each team. Only one destroyer too. That is really, really good for you, considering you didn't take the concealment here. Six kilometer mm. concealment. Now with concealment expert, obviously that's 5.4. Your torpedoes are seven kilometers. So you have to think about concealment expert as giving you that extra 600 meters of play for your torpedoes to hit things. That's the reason why and concealment expert is so important. Everyone. And not get detected by enemy destroyers that like, of course. Could outspot you. Let's give them of course, but, because you know... Because while Minikaze has been nerfed, it still has the concealment. If I remember correctly. Affirmative. Yeah, the tech tree, what you're talking about. Um, yeah. Right, right. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you're trying to torpedo something, you need to torpedo something while it's outside of your concealment range. So it's a lot harder to, to get somebody uh, something out of 6 kilometer than it is for 5.4. All right, now you're moving forward. You're not paying attention to the enemies. You're going to stop and you're going to torpedo. Widespread smoke, by the way. Smoke generator See, now here, if you had smoked, Engine boost or sorry, if you had a concealment expert, you would not have been detected there. You would not have been shot at there. Wouldn't have taken damage, wouldn't have broken your engine. Also, I'm curious as to why you did not fire off your third torpedo. I would fire my third torpedo rack now at the smoke. Also, you've been using widespread. Um, usually narrow spread is a much superior option because it gives the enemy far less room to turn. Um, now you're torpedoing where the ship is. You're not torpedoing based off of the indicator. You have a white bar that shows you where you need to torpedo in order to hit something if they keep going in the same direction. Instead, you just torpedoed where they were. So those are going to miss. I say that, and then you actually got a hit. That's kind of funny. I think because the bot or whatever or the ship, whatever he hit, they beached. You um, also had a gun available, and you didn't use it. I don't know if you noticed that. So if I'm if I'm in a gunboat duel like that, I'm just holding down left mouse button, so it just fires on reload. That way, I can just focus on aim and not worry about are my guns loaded or not. Tied up on teams, on score at least. On ships, I mean. Deactivated. I might use. Well, you've already used your engine boost, but I might actually head for the channel. I say that as the Omaha gets a kill. Never mind. The B cap area is a great place to, to narrow narrow down. That's a funnel, and then you just luck chuck torps down through that channel. Um, but unfortunately, because of the, um, because there's only one ship there, it's just not worth your time to relocate. You got an Emerald over there, Omaha. I see your torpedo range is seven kilometers. See the range on the minimap. Emerald is just now getting into that range, but if he turns out or whatever, those torps aren't going to hit. Again, it's the widespread tool. Like, look how big the gap is between those torps. So when I see a player using widespread torpedoes, unless it's a competitive event environment, 
Um, I usually have a feeling that that player is just not comfortable with torpedoes. That's that's that indicates to me a lack of confidence. Now you could stop and smoke and shoot here, while the uh, while the Kuma is alive and spotting for you. You would get some base decaps if you hit the emerald as well. Now you've gone to you've gone to a narrow spread, but if you notice that white bar is moving inward, and it's like you're chasing the white bar. Don't do that. Look at what the white bar is doing, and you actually I pause. Excuse me, I paused it just about where you want to aim your torps. When you start seeing the bar move inward, you want to go at about half distance and fire torpedoes there. You have a much better chance of, of success than following that white bar. Smoke generator started. Smoke first and then stop and then shoot. You waited too long to do that though, and the Kuma died. The reason that's a big deal is because the Kuma would have provided you spotting. And now you don't have that spotting anymore. So you're forced to run away from this flank now. Which is actually okay, because this is a good ship for doing that. Oh look, your torpedo hit. Enemy cruiser. Smoke screen set. Entire enemy team is down to the south. What I would be doing is flipping my guns to the to the left and I would be turning southward here. Spot the enemy, torpedo them. There you go. Oh look at that, they made the front turret a 360 as well. Once upon a time it was only the middle turret that was a 360. Still there, Puddin? Yeah, why? What's up? No, oh, just very quiet. I want to make sure that uh, I didn't disconnect or something. Uh, I'm just trying to keep me awake. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to keep you awake. Sorry. I mean, I can clearly tell Grunty is not a fan of the 20 kilometer Shermy Torps. <laughs> hey, Wolf. Makes me, makes me very sad in my life. Hmm. Why are we talking about 20 kilometer Shermy Torps? Because they're mm. the bus torps. Keep your guns to the left. Keep your guns to the left. You need to think about when you make contact with somebody, which direction are you going to go? You're probably going to turn to the right. So keep your guns and torps pointed to the left so that you can dump your, you know, your ordnance on your target. Our team has taken the lead. I like that ducky's name. Captain, shoot him up. Shoot him up, shoot him up, pow, pow. Seems like the whole enemy team left after getting this cap and they're all cutting towards the middle, huh? Another reason why I think uh, turning south at when they were capping A was important. Get the vision for, your, for you and your team. What is the enemy team doing? You don't have to shoot. You don't have to get spotted. Just the vision is important. It's also why radio location is good. It would have probably told you that the ships that were on the very outside turned around and are not there anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and this is now pretty much the situation where the kamikaze hates. You gotta push, um, you gotta charge. After ships is something you do not want. And that's true for just about any Japanese destroyer, right? You, you prefer yeah. them coming to you, because then then their their angle of intercept to your torpedoes is, is uh, much deeper, the, you know, the speed that they collide and stuff. And, and here especially, it's just a range problem. Like, mm -hmm. even if you have 5.4 concealment, if you imagine the ship is going away from you, mm -hmm. by the time your torpedoes would reach it, uh, they're outside of the 7 kilometers and your torps have no chance of hitting. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you fired off those torpedoes very early. I don't think they've got a shot at hitting the Octorev. They might have the legs. We'll see. Second, in general, I agree. But because the range is so short on these torpedoes with the 7 kilometer, it makes a difference if you can fire a torpedo undetected at a ship that is running away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or if you can't fire that torpedo. Like I paused... How close do you have to be to a ship for the torpedo to reach it? I paused here for a second, too, because I know what you're thinking. You want to shoot your gun right now. You can. The Octorev only has one turret on you right now. This is a big brain decision, but you could shoot your gun and then smoke because then the Octorev is spotted for 20 seconds. That's the big brain. Honestly, that's probably what I would do here. No, I, I wouldn't because that alerts him that you're still there. The, the I mean, he just took a torpedo. Here is you, you, you go outside of the cap and let mm -hmm. him in and then and you then... stagger your torpedoes in a way that you fire them like every 10 seconds. Right. I know. <laughs> and you can also turn south. And I'm just simply saying. I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to correct, okay? So I agree, I wouldn't be in this situation. I wouldn't be looking to use my guns, okay? But he is. So all I'm simply saying is if he wants to use his guns, then he needs to be able to back himself up with that smoke. Let's see what he does. Yeah. I mean, I would use the guns and smoke if there was someone else close by that would spot this October permanently. And the Iron Duke is coming. It's coming, but it's not there yet. Mm hmm Okay, that was a nice torpedo salvo. You just did something, though. You just went guns, torps, guns. If the Octo Rev is using priority target, he knows you just switched to torpedoes and back to guns again. That's an if. There's also the thing, like, he's probably not continuing this course anyway because... he's just going towards the border. It's very likely that he naturally turns here. You also fired the torpedoes at him, Balwan. So, imagine if you had gone south and you were on his side instead. You, you don't have the concealment to do it because you, you know, whatever, but... Okay, now you can actually stop and smoke here because the Octo Rev is going to be detected by the Iron Duke. Yep, it's also very likely that the October is now going to turn in to angle against them. Which means you going in front of him like this is basically guaranteeing that you fire your torpedoes bow on again. In other words, you have a much lower chance of actually hitting your target. Especially now that you tell him where you actually were with the smoke. Well, and that you allow oh, yourself yeah. get detected. But it seems yep. like the October is completely oblivious, so... Well, that's... that's okay. uh, yeah, that, that works out. Smoke screen set. You gotta aim higher. Those two shells that hit, they hit the uh, side armor plating and they shattered. You want to aim higher at the superstructure because you only needed to do 800 damage or whatever. Well done, Commander. I owe you one. Yes, Rob, it is very hard to hit the superstructure on that battleship. I agree. I'm just saying he aimed too low, right? You got to have that mindset. Where, where on the ship do I want to hit? I got to aim accordingly. So where he was aiming was almost at waterline. So very low chance that that's going to do anything other than maybe start a fire. Flooding chance percentage 30% increase, it increases the flooding percentage that you have. Like, it's not a flood at the addition of 30%. So, if you have a torpedo that has a flying chance of like only 50%, you're not gonna get this up to 80. On the other hand, if you have a torpedo with a 300% flooding chance, you get that up to almost 400 with that skill. Mm -hmm. This game, um, at the higher points, 
sometimes those little percentages do actually matter. Um. <laughs> it's also not immediately divided by three. Whether it's divided by three or not depends where you hit on the target. It's only divided by three if you hit the torpedo belt. Again, Grunty has more experience in Japanese destroyers than anybody else I know, so I would I would go with what he said over what I would say. Also, um, I think you're kiting way too far. You're very afraid of these cruisers. I understand why. But, and again, here's where your concealment could be useful. You need to be six kilometers away from that uh, ducky. Engine boost deactivated. This ducky is probably going to go into the B-cap. He does. Your seven kilometer torpedoes won't do anything. I would maybe look at the um, at uh, the middle one, Almirante Ivcervera, and I might start shooting him. Prevent what the cap. What do you want to do with, with, with torpedoes when you fire them at a ship that is kiting away? Make sure on your minimap you have your torpedo range enabled and you have this circle, uh, this straight line where you're looking at. And then if you aim the right line at the, your target, you look where the intersection point is between mm -hmm. the right line and, 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 and what you're looking at. So you can right. actually see if it's inside or outside that seven kilometers. Right. If it's outside, you're never gonna hit. So seven kilometer range, right? Now you're not lining up torpedoes, but I don't know if you will before the end of the battle, which is why I paused it here, okay? If you fire along the white line, the white line would be more to the right, obviously, because he's moving away and going to the right. So the white line would probably take you to here. So here's where your torpedoes would land, which is way, way the heck outside. I was actually just about to mention that. Now you shoot. Now, shooting it's early. only on one cruiser left, so... Right, but what I was trying to say is earlier shooting on that destroy or on the cruiser that's in the B-cap, that would have gotten you more XP. I know your, your main thing is, I want true. the win. But, like, as long, when, when both cruisers were still alive, it's, it's way more risky. Oh, yeah. So... It is. It is. But it also distracts them from your Iron Duke friend. <laughs> so it works out there too remember you don't get a bonus to your xp and credit earnings if you live in the game so if you know if you have pretty good confidence that you're going to win the game you can afford to be a little bit riskier we call that winning harder you have to be careful not to win too much harder and throw away a game but in that situation there if you blew up not going to impact the the overall uh, ending of the game. The Iron so, Duke would have had to take a torpedo detonated, and then there was still one more uh, cruiser left. I want to come quickly back to the Swift Fish and this intersection mm -hmm. point we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Like, if if you take the Swift Fish, mm -hmm. that intersection point you're aiming for is a little bit closer towards you. It's not by Correct. much. It's just a little bit closer, so you have mm -hmm. a tiny, tiny bit better chance. Mm -hmm. of hitting a ship that is kiting away and it matters less if you have 12 kilometer range on your torpedoes on a shimmer for example but you can mm -hmm. fire them from seven kilometers away whatever they're mm -hmm. gonna reach that target no problem but if your concealment is five four or in this case six and your torpedoes only reach to seven then the margin where you could hit it is much much smaller and every tiny little bit could help there right Right. And again, that's where those percentages can have an impact. Not going to be all the time. And sometimes you're not even going to notice it. But either way, Thud Twit came in second place in this game. Um, we've identified a lot of things for him to think about. His commander build, his positioning, um, choice of targets, all that good stuff. What do you guys think would be a good uh, title for him? And um, I also need to pull up the replay render.
I mean, since he's usually playing co-op and not randoms, why mm -hmm. why not call this learning experience? That can work. I like it. I was thinking of um, I was trying to find a way to to highlight that it's going from a co-op to a random. So what I thought about was doing co-op arrow random. Learning randoms on the job. There you go. On the job training. <laughs> So co-op to randoms or um Brent, you said learning. Learning experience. Like, uh, a transition from co-op to randoms or something works too. I, I'm I trying you don't like these longer phrases for titles. I don't, but just so you guys understand my thought process on this, I'm trying to I'm trying to capture the people who, I know there's people that watch my channel who are co-op mains and they watch and they go, oh, that looks awesome, but they don't know how to do it themselves. I want to capture those people, right? Um, at the same time, tell people that maybe are super unicum that watch my channel, okay, well, this is a, this is a replay that is probably not gonna be for me. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was thinking co-op um, to, to random, so I could do like co-op, I could do like C dash R, or I could do co-op to random in the, uh, with an arrow, and then I could just do, um, ooh, elastic on YouTube, I like that. Right, but you're forgetting the golden rule for a YouTube title. Clickbait. Exactly. I don't care what you say, it's gotta be clickbait. Like, if you want to, like, co-op player goes random. So Elastic over on YouTube says an idea of first steps to greatness. I like Why that. Not? I like that a lot. That is a very... Very what? I mean, that's catchy, but that YouTube. doesn't describe anything what's happening. I disagree. Right, I, I think it's capturing a lot of what's happening. But welcome to YouTube titles. I think it's capturing a lot of what's happening. You gotta start somewhere. And it takes the yeah. first step. Yeah. I mean, it's it's perfect, especially for people that maybe just got this ship on um on the Santa crates. You mentioned that, Puddin. Mm-hmm. Okay. I got mine the old-fashioned way. I gave you up earned it. outside and played it this game. 